Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Really glad to sit down here with Vince from Pi. Don't really know a whole lot about the project, but I enjoyed his personality and I'm really happy to take the time. So Vince, thank you so much for sitting down, my hey, friend. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, man. So, who's the man behind Pi? Um, so, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Sure. Uh, to kick off. Um, so, I'm a recent graduate from Stanford. Mm -hmm. uh, did my MBA uh, there. I um, have actually spent a lot of my time in community organizing, grassroots organizing, doing nonprofit work. And um, a lot of what led me into the crypto rabbit hole was the idea that you could uh, use cryptocurrencies and blockchains yeah. to more sustainably fund social good, mm -hmm. right? Um, we live in a world where uh, the people that tend to try to do good for society often end up like with no money in their bank account, for better or for worse, right? right? And so. When I first, um, you know, kind of stumbled into to Bitcoin and started to see kind of these communities growing up around Bitcoin and Ethereum, these other cryptocurrencies, I said, "Hey, there's a really powerful um, economic tool that we may be able to potentially leverage to address some of the social ills that we have in the world." So, growing wealth inequality. Um, you know, you have people that are increasingly feeling left behind um, by the economy and how it works, and so. I founded a group at Stanford called the Stanford Blockchain Collective, which was about 750 Stanford students that were studying blockchain and cryptocurrencies and trying to understand what, what the real impact could be for everyday people. And um, after that, basically teamed up with two PhDs from Stanford to bring cryptocurrency to the masses and everyday people. And that was the, the beginning of Pi. Okay, so, I mean, I'm definitely with you. Mass adoption is the key. If we yep. don't get a lot of people using the stuff, we're not doing anything here. So, but you know, why, why, why Pi? Why a project? And what's what you know? What's different about Pi? What, what do you? Absolutely. So, um, so my teammates and I, we were basically asking this question of like, okay, what would it really take for us to bring cryptocurrencies to the masses? And we did a, a kind of a design-inspired, user-centric, human-centric design process to understand what were the real obstacles or barriers to cryptocurrency adoption, and how could you actually solve those? And what we found is that. Um, first of all, it was just too damn hard to use, right? It's too hard to access for everyday people. Um, and then the second thing is that it was the value proposition wasn't incredibly clear for people. They weren't sure exactly what cryptocurrency was or why it would make a difference for them outside of the folks that were, you know, um, making uh, money really in more speculative use cases, so trading and all that type of stuff. Right. And so we came to the conclusion that we really needed to be able to build a cryptocurrency from the ground up that was more accessible and that would give people access to what we see as kind of the killer app for blockchain, um, which is mining. Being able to basically contribute and participate in securing a distributed ledger and, and earning cryptocurrency rewards for that. And sure. so Pi basically reimagines Bitcoin from the ground up in a way that is much more user friendly, much easier for people to use, much more fun and much more accessible. Okay, now you said you referenced Bitcoin there. Is this, you know, so is Pi, you know, programmatically, are we talking about a project that's built on top of Bitcoin or are we talking about a layer one blockchain? Is this a layer two to Ethereum? You yeah, know, kind of yeah, tell me absolutely. what we're talking about here. So we actually, um, it is a layer one solution. It's actually something that we actually want to eventually be full stack. Yeah. Um, and the reason that we made that choice is because um, we believe that we actually needed to make um, blockchain and this cryptocurrency accessible literally from the protocol layer all the way up. We actually needed to make mining the currency and the consensus algorithm something that was also intuitive and accessible to people. And okay. you know, listen, I'm a huge fan of Bitcoin, and um, you know, I'm very happy for proof of work and the fact that it's expensive, and um, that's what basically keeps me, me sleeping at night, right? Sure. Knowing that my Bitcoin will be secure, and at the same time, we have to acknowledge that. You know, the everyday person isn't going to, you know, pick up a 20-page manual and learn how to set up, a, you know, a server in their home to, to mine Bitcoin, right? right? If they want to have a good shot at it, and so Pi uses a completely different consensus algorithm that essentially allows everyday people to actually participate in the process of securing the currency and to mine their mine the currency from the convenience of a mobile phone application. Okay, so you guys have built a new blockchain. Yes, a we're layer in the one. process of building it. Okay, yes. it's a layer one protocol. And, you know, so is it, if you're able to mine from your cell phone, now, when Bitcoin was launched, yeah. I'm sure you could have mined from your cell phone you if have. mobile development right. would have been where it was then that it is today. Right. So, when you're, 
are you taking a proof of work approach or what is your consensus approach? Yeah, exactly. So, um, so actually a lot of, the first thing I'll say is that a lot of people actually don't realize that, that in the early days of Bitcoin, you could essentially uh, mine the currency for the cost of computing power, right. right? So you could fire up just a PC or even, you know, back then potentially a mobile phone and you would have been able to earn upwards of 10 Bitcoin every, you know, or 50, 50 Bitcoin, 50, yeah. yeah, 50 Bitcoin yeah. every 10 minutes, yeah. right? So it's like, that, that would have been a nice situation You're earning to be more in. than 10 right now yeah, for a few, exactly. few more months. Yeah, until I think it's May 2020, right? So, um, so yeah, so for Pi, what we, what we did is we had to take a step back from proof of work because it's fundamentally um, not very easy for people. Nobody wants to burn their battery, basically like mining cryptocurrency. Just got right? a new phone yesterday. Okay, yeah. Yeah. right, exactly. Too much YouTube, yeah. too much YouTube. Yeah, yeah sure, Samsung, right? Yeah. Um, and so basically what we're doing is we're taking um, uh, the Stellar Consensus Protocol. Okay. Um, and part of this, by the way, is we actually did a survey of different consensus protocols, right, to understand what would be the most user-friendly, what would be the most um, easy to use and access. And Stellar kind of rose to the top. And the way that Stellar works, it's uh, based on something called Federated Byzantine Agreements. Mm -hmm. And you can think of this as a progressive voting mechanism, where people go into the Stellar network, you can spin up a node and then you identify other nodes in the network and you say, I will only agree to transactions that these three people agree to. And essentially, as each node does that, it kind of aggregates into what you might think of as almost like a global trust graph of sorts, mm -hmm. right? And so the upside of this then is that cryptocurrency mining is not about burning a lot of energy to prove your trustworthiness. It's based more on leveraging your existing social connections and mm -hmm. providing information about who in the world you can and can't trust. And that's how we're enabling people to mine the, the currency from, from mobile devices. So in that, in that sense, you, so with Pi, you would, um, you, you would open up the app, because we're talking about mobile. You spin up a node and you choose who you want to trust in the node, the Stellar Federated yeah. uh, Consensus. Mm -hmm. And the status of sharing the information of who you trust mm -hmm. is, is the mining process? Exactly. Okay. Right. That way that information can be distributed across the network and other people can build their federated trust systems kind of based off that available Exactly. Data. And then when, so the, uh, the plan is also to eventually have PC nodes as well, right? Sure. Which will be responsible for validating transactions. And the idea there is that the graph that gets built by all these mobile phone users is the key input that allows the PC nodes then to understand who can and can't be trusted, who can and can't, whose transactions should and shouldn't be validated. Sure. Sure. Great, man. Yeah. Uh, where can people find out more about Pi? Uh, so uh, just go to our landing page. It's mindpi.com. Uh, Mindpi. Mindpi.com, very simple. That's yeah. P-I as in the, you know, the Greek, um, Greek letter, Pi. And uh, yeah, it's been a really exciting run, actually. So we came out of uh, stealth, you could say, on March 14th, uh, so Pi Day, 314 yeah. of 2019. Um, and basically, since May, we've now added over a million people to the platform. Cool. So when it comes to this concept of like mass adoption and, and cryptocurrency, Pi is actually well on its way to being uh, one of the world's most widely uh, distributed and used cryptocurrencies. So it's cool. been a very, very exciting uh, few months and, and we're just getting started. Cool, to work. cool awesome. Man. Yeah. What do you think's going on with cryptocurrency right now? You know, we've had a pretty, yeah. pretty, uh, pretty good year. So, yeah, you know, yeah. Where do you think we're headed? I mean, I think that there is, we're in the kind of, you know, maturation phase, I think, of cryptocurrency. Obviously, the, the 2016, 2017 bull market and bubble, as some would call it, um, was a very exuberant time, you should say, in the crypto space, yeah. right? Good time for traders, actually. Good time for traders. <laughs> right? Um, I think we're now kind of getting to a place where the rubber starts to, you know, hit, hit the, the road, road, right? And uh, this is when the, you know what I mean, the true believers are really going to kind of emerge and are going to be doing that really hard work to start to bring real utility to everyday people with this technology. And I think that that's the fundamental challenge. Um, I'm very excited about the long-term prognosis for cryptocurrency and blockchains. I think that um, we need this technology more now than we ever have before. And at the same time, I'm being realistic about the challenges of, uh, of really demonstrating the power of this technology to everyday people. Um, I think that the big, the, the holy grail is basically what I think we're trying to tackle with Pi Network, which is true, mainstream mass adoption and true 
utility, which is why people actually use this stuff. So I think that that's basically, if there's a theme for 2020, I think it's, it's both, it's build, sure, but also like, have people use. Get it in the hands of people. Yeah, 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 we gotta do that, man. You know, it's like, you know, we have to make this a lot more um, concrete for everyday people, and that's what's really going to catalyze the next wave of, uh, of crypto adoption. I hope so, man, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Vince, thanks so much for yeah, taking the time. Yeah, it's great talking to you, man. Thanks for Ali, the questions, appreciate I appreciate it, it okay? Yeah. Awesome. awesome.